Hello everybody and welcome to another how-to video for the Rental Tracks Inventory Software Management System. So this time we are finally entering some of your products. So if you're just getting started with the system and you're going through the how-to videos, we've done a lot of work in setting up our basic settings and setting up all of our core of the system, but now we need to enter some inventory items. And I'll give you a little hint. If you're just testing out the system and you're working on a free system, don't spend all of your time entering your entire inventory. What we want to do is enter a few products so that we can test the system out, see what it looks like, see how it feels, see if we it works well for our business model. And then later on when we go to enter in our entire inventory, uh, if you upgrade to a paid version, our rental tracks team can help you by doing a mass product import for you. So don't spend weeks and months entering all of your products in uh, this manual way that we're about to go through because we're going to automate that system for you. Once again, trying to save you some time. So let's look at entering some products into the system. So we're going to go to our products drop down menu and I'm going to go to new product. This is going to be the first step in creating our system. So then you've got to select your product type. So depending on what your inventory looks like, you've got a multiple different items. So we're going to focus this time on just our internal inventory and not sub rental items, which is a different product type that we'll add later on. But for now, we're going to focus on our inventory. So the four product types are rental, standard, virtual, and package. Rental being any product that is leaving with an expected date of return. So any product that is going to be rented out for a price that is coming back to your inventory at some point in time to replenish the stock. Standard is a sale item. So that is an item that is being sold out of your inventory for good. For instance, if you're an event decorator and you're using uh, candles, you are providing those candles to the event and they're going to burn and they're going to melt. So those are not going to be able to come back to your inventory. All other industries have different variations of these types of products, whether you're selling them out of your inventory for good or uh, they are damaged and uh, not able to return to your inventory. That is the standard product. A virtual product is any non-physical product. So that can be any fees, setup fees, delivery charges, um, any of those different things, labor, man hours, etc. you are gonna create as a virtual product. And then a package is any grouping of products. So for instance, you could have an entire uh, an event or a, a product that needs to be bundled together. So if you're an AV company, a lighting setup, a lighting rig, you're going to need to have your poles and your rigs and your, your cords to connect them together, your, your lights themselves, any of the power cords that need to go into it, any twist ties, anything like that. Well, the client needs to see uh, that they are renting a finished product, not necessarily all the little pieces that go into it. So what we do is create those as a package. So the client gets a price for that finished product finished package or bundle and your warehouse gets the internal sheets stating all of the pieces that are needed to fulfill that obligation to make that package. For now we're just going to create a standard rental product. So you click the little bubble and it will open up our new product creation screen. Once that's done you're going to get a lot of information here. So if you've been following along with the how-to videos, you've already created your tax classes in your category. So that's the first step. Now we're going to put in the rest of the information. So from our category drop down we're going to select the category that this is going to fall into. So for, for this purpose of this demo, we're going to create some new audio equipment. We're going to select our tax class based on what we put into the system. So for this, uh, we will use uh, the Ontario tax class of HST at 13%. The number is automatically generated. It's a unique number used to identify the product within the system. So you can just leave that as an automatic generated number. It doesn't affect your inventory. It's mostly computer talk. So the system knows where to pull this item from. Then we've got to give it a name. This is not the name that the client is going to see. This is our own internal name. So we'll call this our test uh, electric drum kit. If you're using the barcode module, you can then click on this field and scan a uh, pre-existing barcode and it will enter the data information in here, making it so that that barcode is available as you go forward. If you're not using the barcode module, then you don't have to fill this out. The next area is the active, yes or no. So you can't ever permanently delete an item from your system. You can only make them inactive or active. Uh, the reason for that is if it, you, we allowed you to permanently delete them, it would affect any orders that these products were tied to later on in the reporting structure. So if the product is available in your system, you list it as yes, as active. If it is not available, you click no. The price that we're going to set for this piece is a standard price for the product for one standard rental, whether that be for one day, one week, however you standard rent that product out, that's the price we're going to set. So I'm going to set this as a $100 rental. The factor group is something that you can get into later on if you provide a, a, a discount or a variation on pricing uh, based on the term of the rental. So uh, 
you can view the how-to video on how to set up your factor groups. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave this as no factor group on this. We just want to rent it out as a standard rental. The replacement price is the replacement value that you would charge to if this product came back damaged or stolen or did not come back at all. So what is the cost to you of this replacement price? And be very specific that this is not the cost of the item, but you also have some opportunity cost that is lost there in having to replace the product. So if it costs us $1,000 for this item, I might charge $1,500 as it might take me some time to replace that as well. Then my number in stock is the, the number of products I have available, the number of this, the quantity of electric drum kits I have in my stock. I'll list that as five. And then my weight in kilograms, I will put this down as a 20 kilogram drum kit. Down at the bottom, we now get into our location. This is where you're going to be entering the location of the item. Now be specific in this because I've had a lot of warehouse clients say, that their, their staff are setting it up and typing in that this is in the warehouse. Well, if you work in the warehouse, you know it's in the warehouse, but be more specific. So we're going to use short form. I'm going to say it's warehouse section five aisle two black box. Perfect. Now my warehouse staff knows exactly where that is and we can save them some time when they get their, their pick sheets and when they get their uh, item lists. When I enter in the order text, this is what's going to be in the product line of the order. So this is what the client is going to see. So I'm going to put that this is a roll-in uh, six-piece kit with pre-set sound. This is exactly what our clients are going to see when they, when they purchase uh, the products from us. And it's going to be put into the product line. So make this as descriptive as you like. You're going to have to get used to it and play with it. Once you get into printing off your paperwork, you're going to be able to see how that looks on the product line, and if it's too much information or less, you're going to kind of have to play with it a little bit. If you've set up your dealers and gone through that uh, preset design, you can pick them from a, or if you've gone through the how set video, how to video on dealers, you can pull them from a list of drop down uh, dealers.